My name's uh, Peter McCowan and I'm a professor of computer science here in the uh, University of London in uh, Queen Mary. I've been a professor now for about the past uh, two years but I've uh, had a kind of career in, in maths and science uh, ever since I, I finished my PhD back in the 1990s. Part of the reason I became uh, uh, interested in mathematics uh, and computer science was because as a, as a kid I was, I was really into, into amateur conjuring. I was particularly interested in the mathematical side of things rather than the sleight of hand. With sleight of hand tricks you've got to, to remember uh, exactly what you're doing and, and they can be quite challenging, whereas a mathematical based trick you can spend more time on the presentation because you know the trick's always going to work. The reason I co-wrote the book The Magic of Computer Science with my colleague Paul Curzon is that when I was uh, younger um, I was very interested in uh, being an amateur magician. When writing the book, I, I kind of remember back to some of my favourite tricks from, from when I was younger, um, and also uh, spent time uh, doing a lot of research, reading some of, some of the, the magic books that I, that I have, as well as, as uh, looking on the, the internet, because there's a, a lot of very interesting mathematical magic uh, materials out there. What was particularly important was the tricks needed to be good tricks, good, strong magical tricks, with a good, solid, interesting mathematical basis. But that mathematics also needed to be not only make the trick work, but actually be mathematics that were used in real computer science applications. As a professor of computer science, I publish lots of papers and learned journals and give keynotes at international conferences. But actually, one of the favorite things I've done with my life is to produce the, the Magic of Computer Science book, because it's exactly the book that I wish I'd been able to go to the, the library to kind of pick up uh, and, and read as a kid. And if it manages to catch just one or two people's imagination and make them see that, that mathematics is, is a wonderful thing, not only because it can make the magic work in, in the tricks, but also that it's the magic that underpins the, the way that the, the modern world around us works, then I'll, I'll, feel, I'll feel happy and contented in, in having done that. The Magic of Computer Science Roadshow has came about uh, almost by, by chance, we'd started to use a, a couple of the tricks in some of the other things that we did, and they went down extremely well. And Paul and I then decided it would be a good idea if we kind of pulled together uh, a series of these tricks and made it into a kind of a, a magic show. Uh, so what we do is we, we have a show where we actually present the, the, the tricks to the audience, and then we challenge them to, to actually work out how the tricks are done. Could you kind of cut off... Um, a, a section of the card, so just take them off from the top, about between about a half or so. So in this dream, what, uh, what he, he did was, um, he showed me something called the down under deal, so that meant uh, doing the cards down and under, and down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under. And then he told me to do it again. Down, under, down, under. And then finally again, down and under. Which left me, after that down under shuffling, with just one card. Now if you'd have cut one card deeper, you'd have shuffled to the Six of Diamonds, but in this case, you shuffled to the Eight of Hearts. And it turns out that that's exactly what you did in my dream, and to prove that, I put a copy of Eight of Hearts there oh, in that pack. No, I'm not. So, could somebody shuffle the cards for me? Anyone who's any good at shuffling cards, could you maybe just give those a, just give them a good shuffle? So this is an experiment in, in body language, in being able to try and uh, tell where people are telling the truth and telling a lie. Um, and for that, um, what we need to do is we need to have two piles of cards uh, where none of us know what are in the, the piles of cards. And so the way you can do that is by using a procedure uh, that was designed in, in psychology labs to actually get random cards. So you actually let the cards, which you've now shuffled, uh, decide what's in the, the, the piles. So, for example, if I deal a red card there, uh, and then I deal an X card under it, there's me going on there. Red card. Red card. Black card. Red card. Black card. Black card. And red. So what we have here is we've got two piles now, and those piles have got either a mixture of red cards and black cards in it. We have no idea. You shuffled the deck. The deck's actually decided through the order of the, the, the colours in there what are in the, those two piles. So I want two people to help me in the experiment. Okay, you have a look at them. All right? Okay, so just have, have fun through. I don't let me see, absolutely don't let me see what those cards are, all right? I want you to answer me a question. I'm gonna try and tell whether you're telling the truth or lying. And you can, you can lie or you can tell the truth. 
Do you have in your hand, do you have more red cards or do you have more black cards? I have more red cards. You've got more red cards. Okay. Right. Do you have more red cards or black cards? You have more? Red cards. Can you swap any two of you cards with her? Okay. So don't let me see the cards. I think by getting you to do all that swapping that you have the same number of red cards as you've got black cards. So how many red cards do you have? Can you count them out loud? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, no way. <laughs> a one card could have made a difference. I knew you were going to swap three, and I knew you weren't going to swap any. So there you are. So the final trick I'm going to do is to, to test to test people's ESP using a different kind of set of cards. I don't know if any of you have seen these before. And these are ESP cards. I want somebody who thinks they might have some psychic ability. You think you? No? No. Somebody thinks you might. How about you, young man? Yes, because we haven't had you yet. Right. But I want you to go with your gut feeling. Do you think you'll be able to do it? Try. You try. And just go with your intuitions. Okay, right. Okay, so you can just touch the back of any of the cards. Okay, that one. Again. That one there. Okay, happy. Do you want to do more? Okay. What do you think the chances are then that you've matched it? So there's a square there. What's the chance that that's a square? No chance. No chance at all, you think? Well, I think your psychic abilities are better than that because oh, you managed to match that. Not only that, but you also managed to match those two, those two, those two, and those two. So very well done. Well done. How's it done? Yes. Oh, fixed, but how? Everyone shuffled the cards. Yeah, like, there must have been some, because I know he's not psychic. I think it's due to math, because you must have been like, counting the, how many cards there is, because you knew how many like, shuffles there were. It's math, because like, it's to do with the number of like cards there is. I think it's just playing magic. So, do you want to know how it's done? Yeah! Later on, we kind of teach them how to, to do the tricks. We show them the maths behind that, and then also show how that maths actually makes the, the real magic of, of computing, the real magic of mathematics in the world actually work. Uh, so it's good, interactive, and challenging. And uh, the least you can do is come away with learning how to do some really cool magic tricks. Um, and uh, if, you, if you want to, to get deeper into it, you can learn about some really cool and interesting maths. We've had some really amazing impacts from, from doing the magic shows. Um, and one of my favourites, there, there's a, a, a kind of trick that looks as if I'm able to, to read people's body language, uh, but it's actually based on algebra. And the, I showed the demonstration, wowed the, the kids, they all believed I was looking at flickers of people's left eyebrows and stuff, and I explained to them, no, it wasn't. It was nothing to do with that. It was all to do with, with, with a bit of algebra. I then showed how the algebra worked, and it's only a couple of lines. And uh, at the end of it, the algebra got a round of applause. <laughs> the More Mascarades project that I'm involved with down here in, in London, um, we're looking at a number of different ways to try and uh, interest uh, young kids in taking their mathematics study further. And one of the, the ways that we're doing this is, again, to kind of catch people's interests through the, the, these kind of magic of, of, of mathematics. Um, and in particular, because it works so well on, on a number of different levels, it, it can be there as just pure entertainment. Uh, but that then kind of draws you into to learning more about really useful and interesting stuff. And remember, keep the secrets and don't break the magician's code. <laughs>